That's four rounds and they're all touching now. Hey guys, Todd Helms with Eastman's Hunting Journals out here today to bring you a review on the new Weatherby Model 307 rifle. Hey, while I got you here, drop down, mash that subscribe button, leave us a comment, let us know what else you want to see. Let us know what you think of this review in particular and make sure you turn on that notifications bell as well so you get notified every time that we drop awesome new content like this review. All right, so I told you that I was gonna give you a gear review today on the brand new Weatherby Model 307. And Weatherby, since they moved to Sheridan, has, it's like it lit a creative fire in them and they're doing things that the company hasn't ever done before. And this Model 307 is a perfect example of that. Now, for you Wyoming folks out there, you're going to recognize the Model 307 is named after Wyoming's area code, or God's area code, as I prefer to call it. So, Weatherby took some inspiration from their home in Sheridan, Wyoming, and named this new model of rifle the 307. This is totally different, but completely complementary to the Weatherby Mark V and the Weatherby Vanguard, but there was a gap in the Weatherby lineup that they felt they needed to fill and that is a Model 700 style action to take advantage of the wealth of accessories out there for the Model 700. All right, so the first thing, first blush, you look at this and you're like, wow, that's kind of a cool looking rifle. I like the, I like the drop at the comb. I like the vertical grip. It's got the chiseled Weatherby forehand on it. That right there is an homage to everything that Weatherby has always done. But that's about where the similarities to anything that you've seen before from Weatherby end. Let me walk you through what makes the 307 unique and uniquely Weatherby. First of all, we'll just take a look at the stock. Weatherby decided that they wanted a stock that was more versatile than what they've offered in the past. You have an adjustable comb riser right here. I can make the height of comb go up and down. And I have an adjustable length of pull from 13.5 inches LOP to 14 inches which makes this gun fit a wider variety. So for me, right from the factory, 13 and a half, pretty much standard, and that's perfect. If I were to give this to Guy Eastman or Scott Reekers, who are taller, longer lengths of pull, they might want to put some spacers in it and make it longer. Weatherby was thinking when they did that, this one gun will fit a wide range of shooters. For example, when I give this rifle to my wife, hand it to her to let her shoot it, she needs more comb height. And so all I do is loosen the screws, pull it up, tighten it back down, and it's set for her. If I want to reverse it, a couple screw turns, drop it back down, and I'm ready to go. It's simple, it's well designed and well thought out. Now you look here, this one is a 6.5 Creedmoor. Barrel is a one and eight twist with spiral flutes. It is capped on the end. I have a cap on here that I can take off and I can put on several different muzzle devices. Obviously a suppressor, if I wanna put a suppressor on here, but it comes threaded and ready to accept Weatherby's AccuBrake ST, which I did not bring out here with me today. When I sighted this rifle in, I verified, I shot a dandy group at 400 yards on steel with this that was well under four inches, but unfortunately I was by myself didn't have video proof, but I'm gonna see if I can recreate all of that stuff with this rifle, and I'm pretty confident that, I, that the rifle could do it. So we've got a 22 inch, one and eight twist barrel on the Creedmoor, and Weatherby offers the 307 in a wide variety of both standard cartridges and a handful of the Weatherby Magnum cartridges as well. Just go to the website, weatherby.com, and check them out, and you'll have the full rundown of not only cartridges, but barrel lengths and weights and all that good stuff that I'm not gonna take up a lot of your time here with today. But I will tell you, right now, bear without scope or anything in it, this rifle comes in at the Creedmoor version at seven and a half pounds with the scope on it. And I got a pretty beefy Vortex Razor HD LHT four and a half to 22 by 50 on here. Pretty beefy scope and this rifle's weighing in just under nine pounds as it sits right here. Perfect for the range as, according to its name, the Mott Weatherby Model 307 Range XP, but not too heavy to hunt with either. I mean, I can obviously handle this rifle no problem, and it is easy to use. 
But let's walk down through some more of these features. First of all, the bolt. Typical 700 style bolt, but this one's unique, guys. Outside of the spiral flutes and the removable bolt handle, bolt knob that I could replace with whatever I wanted, this is a toolless disassembly. I had the good fortune to talk with Luke Thorkelson at Hunt Expo in Utah last year, and the first time I saw one of these, and he broke this bolt down for me in a matter of seconds and put it all back together too. And it was pretty cool to watch. That got my attention and I was excited to see where the company was gonna go with this platform after that. If I move down below the bolt, I have a fully adjustable Trigger Tech trigger. From the factory, this one's set at about three and a half pounds. I'm gonna lighten it up to about two and a half, but that's the cool part about the Trigger Tech trigger is it's easy to adjust, fully adjustable down to two and a half pounds or so. Moving further forward on the rifle, I have the, the magazine release lever here on the front of the trigger guard, and I can pull out my AICS mag. This is just a 7.62 by 51 mag. It'll accept 308 Winchester. It'll accept 6.5 Creedmoor. I like, I've gotten to the point, guys, where I really like a magazine-fed rifle. Um, Back in the day, I wasn't so sure about them when they first came out, but now the more of them that I've used and shot, I, I really like this compatibility with AICS mags. It's a five round mag. You could use a bigger mag for competition if you wanted to or at the range, but for hunting purposes and most of the stuff I do, five rounds great. If I want more ammo, I just grab another mag, put it in my pack or in my vinyl harness and I'm good to go. Flipping the rifle over and if I look at this 307 action on this back side. I have a bolt release right here that I could pull up, take the bolt completely out of the rifle just with this bolt release lever. That is a really nice feature and something that you see becoming more and more standard on 700 type actions because I don't have to mess with anything down here on the trigger assembly. It's all just right here. Another thing about the bolt is I have an M16 style extractor, which on a traditional 700 bolt you don't have. That is an addition to this, and what it's providing is much more positive and reliable extraction of spent casings. Very fluid, very smooth, as you would expect from a 700 style action, and highly, highly compatible with all of the various accessories that are available for the 700. Another thing about the Model 307 is it's offered in three variations. We've got the Range XP right here, that Weatherby sent me and I'm gonna show you and put it to the test on the range. I've shot it some and I'm impressed with it so far. There's also a 307 chassis version built upon the Hunt 26 chassis from MDT. That gun's more of your hunting style. It's, a, it's much lighter weight. Obviously you could use it for target shooting and competition as well. But here's the interesting thing. Weatherby's also offering this 307 action naked, bare bones, by itself. It's called the Builder's Action. You can buy just the 307 Action and custom build whatever you want to build off of it. Both short and long, like I said, you can get the 307 Range XP in a long action Magnum as well, or standard long action, or short action. The regular action, unbarreled from the factory, you could get available short or long, and you could do whatever you wanted to do with it. Whether we wanted to cover all their bases in the marketplace with the 307, so they produce two rifles and a bare bones, no nonsense, just an action that you could buy and customize yourself. There isn't much more on there. I've got dual studs on the front of the stock and a rear sling stud here. As you can see, I have my swagger bipod attachment and shooting stick attachment on the front stud here, leaving the back one open for a sling or anything else that I want to put on there. Lots and lots of options. On this stock, this is a composite stock, it's very structurally sound, it's very rigid. I've got a vertical grip with not really a palm swell, but just a nice rounded feel to it and textured patches, both on both sides and on both sides of the forend as well. It gives me great index points, great grip if I want to. One of the things that has kind of become popular in the last few years is the vertical style grip. 
I am a huge fan of a vertical style grip and it's awesome to see Weatherby put that into play. If you notice how I put, how I can put my hand in it, on older models you got a more dished grip and your hands back here and it's great for shooting off of sticks or shooting from field positions like maybe off a knee or even freehand. But when I get prone on this rifle or get in a more rested position, man, it's nice to have your hand be vertical. And Weatherby thought of that and they added that in. So as it comes from the factory, the Model 307 Range XP has a Magpul magazine release. And it's right here on the front of the trigger guard. You got a Magpul trigger release that's built into the Magpul trigger guard. And you've got the AICS Magpul magazine. And that comes straight from the factory that way, guys. Two Wyoming companies joining up to make one great rifle. And I'm excited to show you how it shoots, but I'm gonna take it to the range to really put that sub MOA accuracy guarantee through the paces. All right, so the other day I promised you that I would shoot this rifle on camera because I shot some really nice groups with it. Definitely sub MOA that live up to Weatherby's guarantee. But I didn't do it on camera. And like I said out there, painting the steel, if you don't do it on camera, it doesn't count in today's world, unfortunately. So I am going to shoot at 300 yards and at 400 yards. Well, the range is in meters, so it's gonna be a little further than that. I think I got 328 dialed up here. So I'm gonna make my adjustment, which is 3.15 MOA come up. So I just pop the top on the scope and I'm gonna go to three and it's 0.15. So I'm gonna go right there and just call it good. Right at three MOA for a come up. I have a freshly painted blue gong or blue, blue plate at 328 yards. Let's see if I can shoot a sub three inch group because that would be sub MOA. I think the rifle can do it. Let's see if I can do it. So, hearing protection. Nice P mag, easy load. We're ready to rock and roll. Fire in the hole. Well, my dope must be a little bit off because I'm hitting low. But that's four rounds and they're all touching now. Let me see if what, about the fifth one. So, sub MOA at 400, or th sub MOA at 328 yards is gonna be less than three point, three and a quarter inches. And I've got a center splash there, center splash there. This is my very first shot. For some reason today, my dope is off from the last time I shot the rifle, but I'm not terribly worried about it because I still shot a good group. So there is a center, there's a center, there's a center, and there's a center. So I mean, if I, if I take my index finger, which is about three inches, center to center, I got about another half inch maybe, center to center, Man, I'm right at that sub MOA guarantee. Now, I should have, uh, I, you guys are gonna say, why don't you have calipers? Why don't you have a, why don't you have a measuring tape? Well, I forgot, okay? So you're just gonna have to go with it on this. That, that's gonna be pretty close. I mean, that's the palm of my hand. I can cover that with the palm of my hand. They all fit in the palm of my hand, guys. We can measure the palm of my hand. We'll get back to the office with the measuring tape if you want. I did have one over here that I adjusted for. I wasn't happy hitting low and I thought I got a nice little group, four shot group right here that's going to show my sub MOA accuracy guarantee. I'm gonna to try to put one in the bullseye. So I adjusted, I made a one click come up and that's where I hit. So I'm pretty happy with that. If this were an elk uh, and I was shooting at center, center mass, you know, center line on the body behind the shoulder in the crease and that was an elk, those are heart shots right there. Even a deer, this is a mule deer and I'm holding center, I'm heart shooting him. I like that, that'll work. All right, so I'm gonna take a minute while this rifle cools down a little bit. I'm gonna show you the toolless disassembly of the Model 307 action. So with my bolt releases here on the side, I just pop it and it comes out really simple. And all I have to do is press down on my thumb. If your hand isn't super strong or 
If you got carpal tunnel or something, you can put the bolt on a hard surface here and press down with your thumb and the bolt handle slides right out. Then you've got your bolt disassembly right here. You've got a firing pin spring. It's all greased up. Now keep in mind, if you were to drop this thing in the dirt, you're going to want to spray it down and re-lubricate it with, you know, lithium grease or something like that, what Weatherby has from the factory here. Where this really shines, you might be thinking, why in the world would I take my bolt apart in the field, Todd? That's a, that's a gunsmith thing. I've never taken my bolt apart. I don't need to. Well, think about it this way. You get water in this and it's super cold. You're on a backcountry hunt and you need to get this thing dried out or it's going to freeze or maybe it has frozen already. You can put it by the fire, by a heat source of some sort, even if it's inside your jacket. Get it so you can take it apart, get it thawed out, get it dry, and put it back together. That is why you might want a field strip. You get dirt in here, maybe you get a hung primer or something that comes out, you've got problems. Things happen, guys. I've heard horror stories, especially on dangerous game hunts like brown bears, for example, where a primer got dislodged from the case and was lodged in the action and the gun was useless. They couldn't even get it open, couldn't even get it to work wouldn't fire. That is why a toolless disassembly in the field can pay dividends for you. But now, how do I get it back together? Well, it's pretty easy. Slide it back together and you would think that it would fit in this big detent down here. But if you look, if that when that's lined up, your two bolt lugs aren't going to work like that. So what you have is a smaller detent further up on the bolt shroud. I put the bottom of the action slide. I have to put this dovetail in to that little small detent like that. Now look, your two bolt lugs line up horizontally with the back of the bolt. Same thing as before, put it on a hard surface or you could do it with your hand either way, it doesn't matter. Press down on the bolt, on the back of the bolt and slide the handle in and it's slick as a whistle. That is really easy, but you have to find the right detent or it's not going to work for you. Super simple, guys. And again, you might be wondering, well, why would I take my bolt apart? Well, I just enumerated the reasons why you might need to take your bolt apart toollessly in the field. And Weatherby thought that through pretty clearly. Pretty awesome job. I've been very pleased with the accuracy of this Model 307 Range XP so far. And I shot a beautiful sub MOA group at 400 meters the other day. I wanna to try to replicate that out here this morning in the field. And they're all right there. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I'm really close to an MOA. That's not as good a group as I shot the other day without a camera. Ah! Okay, so this is 400 meters, 438-ish yards. It's 437 point something, something, something. But I should be less than four and a half inches for, an M for a sub MOA group. This is my first shot, actually this is my first shot, second and third, man that's going to be close. This is my fourth and my fifth. Um, I, I, I drifted, this might have been me a little bit, but they're, I mean they're touching. Those are really good. Uh, I did not make an adjustment for MOA on this, but they're all right there. Again, mule deer, center mass, those are heart shots. Elk, center mass, heart shots. Guys, um, as a hunting rifle, I'm stoked with that performance. I would need to fine tune my dope a little bit and I'd be right in the hunt in a competition as well. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm not quite sure that's less than four and a half. This is definitely not less than four and a half inches. But if we looked at a three shot group, center to center, oh dude, we're right there. We are right there. Three shots. I don't know.
pretty good. I'm impressed with that accuracy, guys. I'm happy with that. The, the Weatherby Model 307 Range XP is a winner. You're looking at a, at a factory rifle, less than $2,000, um, right out of the box, shooting factory ammunition. I'm impressed. So hey, thank you for joining me on this review. I appreciate you taking the time to come along. Make sure you go to Weatherby's website and check out what they've got going on over there. Adam and the guys over in Sheridan are constantly innovating, constantly building new products, and they're doing a good job. They're doing a great job. So, go get your hands on one of these new Weatherby Model 307s. I think you're gonna be pleased. I know I'm impressed. Great rifle, guys. Go check them out and let us know what you think. Until next time, we'll see you in the field.